an area that I know is important to prospective parents is that of admissions. How do you manage to secure a place at St. Christopher's? Well, let's deal with some of the big headlines to start with. The first thing is that we have 195 places each September for pupils to join us in year seven. It may be helpful if I summarise our admissions policy, but do please check if you're in any doubt on the policy in full. That's available in the prospectus, but also on the school's website as well. This is an oversubscribed school. We don't take that for granted, but that's just a statement of fact. We have been oversubscribed for many, many years. And I know that you'll want to do everything that you can to ensure that you maximize the chances of securing a place for your child if St. Christopher's is the right place for you. So how does it work? Well, we have 195 places. We don't want to increase that number, even though we've thought about it on a number of occasions. And we don't want to do that because we know that getting to know pupils as individuals is so important, but that that can only occur when there is a certain number available. And we think that that figure, the 195 figure, is about right. We, like all schools, offer places firstly to look after children or those children with a statement of special educational needs. And that's the right thing to do. And secondly, we offer our places to 28 pupils who attend one of two primary schools in the local area, All Saints at Plainton Moors and also Altham St. James. Then once those 28 have secured a place, we then use the most common form of admissions criteria, and that is church attendance. That is to say a church or a chapel, which is listed as part of Churches Together, the Northwest Alliance, or the Evangelical Alliance. Do check if you're in any doubt. Church attendance at this school refers to the better attending parents' church attendance in the two years prior to an application being made for a place at the secondary school. We know that in these COVID times, when schools have been shut, that there have been some restrictions on worship. And do look at the prospectus and our admissions policy for clarification on that and the way in which clergy will interpret attendance at that time. And you'll be asked to complete a supplementary form that's been made available to our year six families together with the prospectus. That asks you to make a declaration as to the regularity of church attendance. We then ask you to pass that on to the clergy that uh, lead your church and ask them to verify that what you've said is the case is actually the case. It's then the clergy's responsibility to return that to school prior to the meeting of the governing body when they look at all of the applications for this school. And last year, that number exceeded 800 applications for those 195 places. And they then apply the admissions criteria to those applications in order to arrive at that final figure of 195. It's worth trying to scotch a few rumours that might be out there and persist about admissions to St. Christopher's. Some people I hear them say, say that it's impossible to get into St. Christopher's. Well, that's clearly not the case because 200 or so do each year. Others will say, well, St. Christopher's cherry picks its pupils. That isn't the case either. We are a truly comprehensive school and we rejoice in the fact that we have pupils of all abilities who join us. Another rumour is that if you live in Accrington, that's the only way to gain a place at St. Christopher's. Again, that's not the case. We take pupils from over 50 primary schools and those primary schools can be found dotted around the whole of East Lancashire. It's why every day over 12 buses arrive outside the school, coming from all parts of Pendle, all parts of Burnley, all parts of Blackburn and the Ribble Valley. We are 
open to all those pupils who meet and secure our admissions criteria. Others will say, well, the admissions to St Christopher's are for those who only worship at a Church of England church. Again, that's not the case. Those who worship at other Christian Trinitarian uh, establishments have equal chance of securing a place amongst those 195 each year. There's a very clear chronology about the applications process that it's important to follow. The first key date is the end of October. By that time, you must have completed your online local authority application for a secondary school place. You should also have completed a paper copy of our supplementary form. That's the one that confirms your level of church attendance. You complete it and pass it on to a member of the clergy, a church leader uh, at your church or chapel or place of worship. It's then their responsibility to sign and to verify your attendance and to send that back into school. The deadline for that is the 1st of December and the governing body in early December consider the hundreds of applications for the school and apply the admissions criteria to arrive at our 195. We then inform the local authority and they in turn inform you on the 1st of March of 2021. And then who knows, at the beginning of September of next year, it may well be that you find yourselves as a parent, as part of our school community, and we will be able to welcome your son or daughter into this school. A number of years ago, admissions to secondary school in Lancashire were changed. And something with a rather odd title of equal preference was introduced. It is an odd idea. It's an idea that not all head teachers understand. So let me explain it a little bit, if I may. You're asked to list the three secondary schools that you would prefer your child to go to. You'll have checked the admissions criteria for each of them to see whether you fit that criteria. In ordering those three, the local authority will firstly consider the school that you placed at number one. If you meet the admissions criteria for that school, then you'll be offered a place at that school. If you don't meet the admissions criteria, you will then be considered for your second place school. But importantly, your second place school won't know that you were rejected from your first place school, and therefore you won't be at any material disadvantage for being in that position. And likewise, if your second choice school isn't successful, your third choice will consider you equally, not knowing that one and two were different schools. It's important for us though, and we know this by looking at our records over many years, is that if you want to go to St Christopher's, then you must be honest on your admissions application. If you want St Christopher's, tell us by putting St Christopher's first. And by doing that, you maximise the chances of securing a place. If you're unsuccessful because you don't meet the admissions criteria, then you're not disadvantaged in terms of your second choice school. Equal preference. It's a difficult idea. It seems strangely contradictory, but it's the one that is in place and it's the one that you'll need to follow.